Ordinary Council meeting of the 4th of April 2023. I declare the meeting open at six o'clock. On behalf of the City of Vincent, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on this evening, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I'd like to pay respects to Elders past and present. Moving on to apologies and members on leave of absence. We, Mayor Cole is on leave of absence from the 28th of March to the 24th of April 2023, and Councillor Iopolo is an apology this evening. We will now move on to public question time and the receiving of public statements. Thank you to everyone that is attending in the chamber today. Uh, when I open public question time, you can come up to the microphone. There's no set order. Everybody gets three minutes. We do have a timer. And at the end of the three minutes, I will let you know that your time is up and ask you to finish up as soon as you can. Uh, we do record a public question time. So if you would prefer not to be recorded, if you could please let me know and we can make arrangements for this. Uh, may I have the first speaker, please? Um, my name is Norell O'Neill, uh, 1 Matlock Street, Mount Hawthorne. I'd like to address two points. One is um, the devolution of the community consultation process, which is really unfortunate. And the second, to please request that the councillors approve item 9.5, which regards the consultation process for the mobile phone tower to be placed on Britannia Reserve. Thank you. Uh, in the first instance, um, I, a, a comprehensive community consultation process was undertaken in 2021 that resulted in the majority wanting the phone tower to be located at the top of Britannia Road on the freeway side of Litter Street. In your documents, it's referred to as option one toward the northwest of the reserve. A group of residents didn't like being able to see that mobile town, that mobile tower from their homes. So they lobbied the city of Vincent, resulting in new consultants who were brought in to then negated any previous consultation process that was undertaken in 2021. That uh, process was, as a result of that, an alternative was found, which happens to be on top of a long-standing signposted footpath and will be dangerous for the children who are going to be using the pump track. The fact that we're going through this process tonight highlights the pervasive doubts that now surround Vincent's supposed community consultation processes, raises questions about who and how decisions are made within the city, underscores an utter lack of transparency, and highlights justifiable concerns regarding potential conflicts of interests, be they real or, or um, perceived. The described tower is referred to as being 36 metres plus two. There's another two because if you read the notes carefully, it said they will there will be landfill to take it up to the brick fence it's going to um, abut. Thus, it will no under no circumstances be covered by the tree canopy. It far exceeds the height of the tree canopy. There is no benefit from screening from mature trees. The tower will reduce the public open space in this area by approximately 140 metres because of the tower plus six metal cabinets for each uh, company that's going to be using it. Two are piggybacking, but we already have 12, and that's for three phone companies. The proposed location would result in the removal of three healthy, mature native trees that are very old. One has already been hacked to pieces and just which coincidentally happens to be in the proposed area. One side, every limb on one side of that tree has been removed. The area has restricted use and is underutilised due to the area being adjacent to the Mitchell Freeway. This is complete nonsense. The city spent thousands of dollars relatively recently installing a pump track. So, uh, and there's Narelle, also- you've reached your three minutes, just letting you know. Okay, you I just have, up, I, yeah, I have a really important point because it says there are no cultural heritage or visual landscape values to be compromised by the location. This is outrageous. Prior to European settlement, the area was part of Lake Munger, which even the city of Cambridge is now has acknowledged by pr promoting it be called Gallup. 
By 1902, suburban Leaderville was growing up to the lake shore. It most certainly has cultural significance. And any time that's mentioned in the city of Vincent, the option is to concrete over it so it's no longer a problem. Thank and you, Narelle. And also the notes say health seconds. concerns finish up, are, no, are not in the planning consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending this evening. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Count. Good evening, councillors. My name is Greg Curtis. I own a property in Munger Street, Northbridge. Um, my issue is about the safety and security around that street in the surrounding areas. I was here at the last meeting on the 14th of March, and I asked two questions about security. One was answered by the council, and the other question was avoided. And so I wish to ask that question again. The question is, does the city acknowledge that the security and safety of residents has worsened since the establishment of the homeless shelter at 41 Munger Street? That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, I have had some information on this one. My understanding is that... Um, the city is aware that there have been concerns raised around safety and security from uh, residents within the Munger Street precinct um, and that they are scheduling a meeting with WA Police and the Department of Communities and the Office of Homelessness to discuss concerns around antisocial behaviour in the Money Street precinct. So um, is there any further response from administration or does that cover it? Okay, so my understanding is that there is uh, awareness and understanding that concerns have been raised in the Money Street precinct and that there is an intention to engage with this, uh, the relevant state government department and WA police to address these concerns. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, good evening. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor and uh, fellow councillors. Uh, I'm here speaking on item 10.2, which is to do with the parking. My name is Sean Offer. I'm from Fresh Provisions in Mount Lawley. I'd like to thank the uh, councillors I've spoken to in the last week uh, for showing their concern on the issues and doing the consultation that the, uh, the city has not. Uh, I'm just here to reiterate my case that uh, our business and many businesses in the area have been squeezed on multiple angles, be it now parking, staffing costs, staffing in general, the packaging challenges, and uh, also on energy costs. But uh, really, we're here because of the lack of consultation about our businesses and how they're going. Uh, now, despite the report showing you know record damage in the area, we're still pursuing this dogged approach to parking. March just finishing off, I can say to you now that we've lost another 300 customers over 300 customers a week in the last uh, in the last month as well now just to paint the picture for you you know we've gone from 81 bays with an hour of free parking uh, right at, uh, adjoining our business to six 15 minute bays that are provided by the council now any changes that happened about uh, tonight and going forward it's not about benefiting our business we're only trying to get back to the status quo so we've lost here and all the businesses around us have, have lost so any changes don't benefit our business. We're only trying to get back to where we were. You know, the complaints to the council, you know, not having many are one thing, but, you know, take a look at the uh, the social media and it's a light with complaints. Consultation has not been happening with uh, the public and it's not being listened to when it has is happening. Currently, we're facing the issue of ordering our Christmas stock. And what do we do? You know, we didn't do so well at our last lot of Christmas stock and here we are not knowing what's going to happen now because we're going to push this debate off for a few more months to get into a budget process. We're frustrating our customers and we're taunting them with parking, parking application costs every time they visit. And then when they get their bank statements, they get multiple lines showing how many times the Easy App has actually put their hand in their pocket. We're facing a recession in this uh, economy and these types of challenges are not going to be any good for us. There are different parking rules throughout the council and I'd like to see them the same throughout, but I really want to try and see that the Mount Lawley business area survives. Without the uh, figures uh, from Frame Court, the parking changes where it's a 22% drop across the, uh, across the city. Looking at the information in the report, there's full of errors. You know, a 56% increase from $1.96 does not equal $3.45. $1.96 is 56% of $3.45. These uh, revenue increases, I see the big change from the last briefing statement to this current statement now. There's a lot of mistrust in these figures and I really implore you to have a good look at them. 
we're looking for money. You know, why don't we get rid of these uh, monthly parking arrangements that allow $7 all day parking in the different various car parks throughout the city of Vincent? The city of Perth have realized their issues and they now offer free parking throughout the city at night time. The use of vehicles in our city is uh, well known by our, our, uh, our ratepayers, uh, my fellow residents. We use our vehicles differently these days. Just because we happen to pop into the shop and having our cars doesn't mean we got in our car just to go to the shop. But please, you know, just think about all the businesses in the area. I thank you all for your time and for considering this, uh, this item and uh, I'll just ask you to make the right decision for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. May I have the next speaker, please? Yeah, my name's Linda Harris from Brentham Street, Leaderville. I wish to raise concerns about the council's response to the petition that was presented at the last month's meeting. At this petition, 110 people signed it and took us three days to get this. The petition was requesting the council erect large signs at the entrances, all entrances to the bitumen paths in Britannia Reserve stating pedestrians only. And it read, we are concerned about the safety of pedestrians walking on the bitumen paths within Britannia Reserve. This is becoming quite dangerous because of the increasing number of speeding cyclists, e-scooters and skateboards. The pedestrians using this park include the elderly, people on mobility scooters and wheelchairs, parents with prams, small children learning to walk, and dog walkers who often have elderly dogs. Many in this group cannot hear the speeding vehicle or move quickly to get out of the way. Some are becoming too frightened to walk in the reserve. We do not have a problem with young children learning to ride as they travel so slowly and we are concerned about their safety as well. Uh, the council's response to this petition appears to be putting up signs that are actually on the bitumen itself, not at the entrance to the park. These signs read, share, respect, enjoy, and have a picture of a, a dog, a child, an adult, and a bicycle. Now, we certainly support this, these sentiments, but we feel that this will do absolutely nothing to increase the safety of the park. The issue is people speeding through on e-scooters and bicycles. So we would very much like the council to really consider what we've requested uh, a number of people are very upset and angry about the council's response to this, and it is really not a safe place for the elderly to walk these days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, just also to let you know that um, this matter in terms of potential um, consideration of safety and access improvements around this area is also something that is going to be considered through the annual budget process as well. Um, is there any additional comment from administration? in relation to that item and where things are at that's still scheduled to occur, the condition report? Yeah, we've, they're preparing a condition report and that will um, outline uh, potential areas that could be improved in relation to safety, uh, pedestrian amenity and so on. May I have the next speaker, please? Good evening, councillors, executives and Madam Chairperson, Acting Chairperson. My name is Greg Johnson. <clears throat> I'm the owner of Treadway Shoe Store in Mount Bawthorne, uh, an iconic business that's been there for 70 years. And I have spoken on this item, 10.2 in former meetings and the briefing meeting last week in the original meeting. Um, I wanna make, I wanna ask two questions and I wanna, uh, before I do, I just wanna acknowledge Councillor Susan Warner who came to see me on this issue and engaged me and spoke at length and I appreciate the fact that you've engaged me and acknowledge the fact that uh, you're my representative, ward representative. I'd also like to acknowledge Peter Verris who came today and spent two hours with me uh, and we had a very meaningful discussion about the strategy of parking in the city of Vincent. It was extremely meaningful and I'm extremely pleased that the executive director acting in this capacity has come to make the effort to see someone about such an important issue of small business. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Alexander, who's not here tonight, who's also engaged me in this matter in respect of calling me on the phone. Um, unfortunately, I try to engage... Just to let you know, Greg, Councillor Alexander is online and um, is oh, okay. here to hear your statement. Councillor Alexander online. Okay, and unfortunately, there's one uh, part of this um, recognition that uh, I remain remiss on. I try to engage Councillor Logan. And on three occasions, I rang him to speak with him and I haven't had a call. So um, for that, I feel... Uh, Somewhat agreed, you're my representative, you put your hand up to get voted in and you got voted in and I expect 
that you would respond by calling me back as the others have done so. Anyway, these are the questions. <clears throat> this is uh, this item has now been going for some time. It's a critical item to small business in uh, in the city of Vincent, not just to myself as a business, but to the wider small business community, which I represent here tonight. And I've had many people contact me on this issue. I've got two questions. Um, the to which I'd like a formal response. Um, when it was moved to change uh, from the one hour free parking, uh, it was done so and promoted effectively at a meeting by default by the CEO who suggested that we could, by way of um, a compromise, have a one hour, first hour, $1 fee. Um, there was some objection to that and some discussion. And uh, it was uh, made effectively on the run. It wasn't a motion as such put on the agenda item so we could be prepared for it. So we were somewhat unprepared. As a consequence of that discussion that went about, the mayor then interdicted and assured the council, the administration, and more importantly, the ratepayers and small businesses of the city of Vincent, that this was only a trial. This was only going to be a trial for six months and no longer. And after the trial, we would have a report and the report would then be analyzed and subject to the report uh, being successful and the criteria was established by the CEO that there would be approximately a million dollars in revenue collected. That was one of the criteria. But if the other criteria, the rest of the report wasn't successful, then, then the council would go back to the former status quo. My question is... Greg, I'm just going to let you know you've reached your uh, three minutes. If you could ask your question and then conclude your time. You're okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll summarise this. Right My question is... Is the council going to go back to that guarantee that the mayor gave us that the status quo would be resumed? There would be no $1 fee continuing. There would be no other suggestion of anything else but the original status of one hour free. Is she going to meet that commitment? If not, is it not in breach of faith with the rate pass? Thank you, Greg. I uh, obviously would just draw everyone's attention to the fact that council is a group of nine people and we make decisions as a group. So um, I'm definitely happy if you have any other questions, you can submit them in writing and, and obviously welcome to um, attend in the chamber again in future. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, I, I have one further question, not tonight, which I'll accept your invitation to put it in writing. That would be it's lovely. It's in respect of the money collected illegally, the $1 collected illegally. Okay. Thank you very much, okay. Greg. We look forward to receiving that. Thank May you. I have the next speaker, please? Uh, good evening, Deputy Mayor and Councillors. Leslie Flory, 79 Sass Ave, Mount Hawthorne. I used to have a lovely character family home on my property with polished floorboards, lead light windows and orna ornate ceilings. Now I have no family home. All I have is a parcel of land with a massive City of Vincent main stormwater pipe on it. 31 metres of stormwater pipe. I now carry all the restrictions and the easements imposed by the City of Vincent. I have two questions. I'd like a copy of, of the City of Vincent's main stormwater and drainage system plans used and held prior to me discovering this main stormwater pipe on my property, which was on or about June 2021. My second question, I'd like to know if, if the grates placed in Sass Ave Mount Hawthorne, which were approximately two years ago, feed into the main stormwater pipe that is on my property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Leslie. We'll provide a response to those questions in the minutes. Uh, Dudley Meyer Highgate, the first item is 10-2, the first hour free. I think this report's gone from bad to worse. Suddenly the revenue that's been collected jumps from $250,000 to $435,000 without any explanation whatsoever. Table two in the report hasn't been changed. It still shows $250,000. So the recommendation seems to be inconsistent with the data that's presented. The other thing is I thought I'd do an analysis of the APAC and Easy Park data that was in tables five and six. If you use the total hours and the average stays, it's easy to work out the number of stays. And what it shows is the number of stays dropped by about 122,000, not the 52, not the 50,000 that you claim elsewhere. So there seems to be significant inconsistency in the data. Um, I've sent a question about this. Staff can check it. 
The staff have also recognised as a $1 uh, that's been received, but in no way recognise the potential loss of parking revenue from the 50,000 or 120,000 people who may have stayed longer than that first hour. A response to Councillor Alexander's question from last week was that the report has been updated to ref reflect this. That's not true. That report has not been updated. Professional is the last word I'd use for this report. It's sloppy, shows no real analysis, and seems to have inconsistent data. I just remind councillors, you're not elected to make tough decisions. You're elected to make smart decisions based on reliable information that you can trust. And I think you should listen to the people who've spoken previously. They've got skin in the game. No one else in the room has. The second item is 10.1, the animal local law. Since 2019, the city has proposed three local laws that have been knocked back by the Joint Standing Committee. They're the local government property local law, parking local law, animals local law. That's three out of three since 2019. I do not recall a previous local law being knocked back. I may be wrong, but I, I can't remember anything similar. I think it's sloppy. 13.1, the Alma Leak intersection. I'm not buying into the design or efficacy of, the, of uh, what happened. I'm concerned about the waste of money. When it came to council, the staff said there were three possible designs, ranging from full concrete diversion to water-filled barriers. Um, the report suggested the three options range in cost from 30 to 40,000 for water filled barriers to 35 to 60,000 for the concrete diversion, diversion, which is eventually implemented. When I asked the staff how much the concrete uh, solution actually cost, they couldn't tell me, it was too early. When I pushed them, they said it's somewhere between 10,000 and 20,000, which is a far cry from the 35 to 60,000 they were first estimated, which may go some way to explaining why the capital works program is such a mess. When I asked them to justify the 30 to 40,000 estimate for the water fill barrier option, they couldn't. I pushed them further and I pointed out that the city also already owns the barriers. They said um, the city may have to buy barriers because the barriers were being used for other projects. Lo and behold, city's barriers are actually being used. So I don't, don't believe that. Um, I think the whole thing just doesn't make sense. And I just point out when I asked who approved this, was it the manager or the director? It was an administrative decision. Thank you. Thank you, Dudley. When we come to this item, I will be asking the CEO to provide an explanation in relation to the changes in the agenda Thank item. You. Obviously, welcome to stay in the chamber or watch on the live stream. Next speaker, please. Thank you. I think that was an opportune time. Leon Furios from North Perth. I'm here picking up that last topic to speak about uh, the diagonal diversion on Leak Street on behalf of the Save North Perth Streets Action Group. This is agenda item 13. It's also the subject of a petition that's before the council. Uh, you may recall I was here a month ago uh, presenting the results of a change.org petition against the diversion. That petition has over 470 signatures. We've since filed a formal petition meeting the city of Vincent's form requirements. That quickly gathered 96 signatures and it incorporates by reference the online petition that I mentioned. Alongside the petition, there's now a notice of motion before the council calling for a report and early determination of the trial at the next council meeting in May. So that's the current state of play. The council now has before it two instruments uh, in relation to the diagonal diversion. There's the motion and there's the petition, both directed to the same objective, which is to facilitate the early resolution of the diagonal diversion trial. And as the proponent of the petition, I can say we are content for the petition to be bundled together with the notice of motion so that a final vote can occur at the next meeting in May, I would urge the council to vote in favour of the motion later this evening. I just wanted to say one more thing. I'd remind the council that there is some urgency uh, to get the diversion resolved sooner rather than later. We've already raised the safety concerns caused by the diversion. Some of those concerns are mentioned in the administration's comments to the motion. There are safety issues at the site itself, and there are issues in the surrounding streets, including around a primary school. So standing here today, the risk of something going wrong is reasonably foreseeable. And the longer the delay in sorting out the diversion, the more acute that risk becomes. And so this urgency is a factor in uh, that should be borne firmly in mind by the council when it comes to deliberate on the motion that's coming this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Leo, and we'll come to the petition at item 5.1. Next speaker, please.
Right. Good evening, Chair, Councillors and CEO. My name's Vern Gardham. I live at 20 Hutt Street, Mount Lawley, which is on what's referred to as a loop. I've lived there since 1982. And I have to say that I can't say very much complimentary about this paper. It lacks even a fundamental spell check, especially the report on relating to the briefing session. It lacks proofreading and contains other fundamental problems. In, then may I just confirm you're talking about I'm Argentine sorry. 10.2, is that correct? Uh, In, no, it, it, the, I have to apologise. The notice of motion, is that correct? It, this is the first dollar fee matter. That's, that's what I thought. Thank you now, very much. Now, it's interesting because the printout, and I hope you'll take this away because when I left home, this item was being shown as 10.3. I actually text somebody to draw their attention to the fact that it was no longer 10.2. Yet I had a, I requested a printout when I got here and lo and behold, we're back to 10.2. But the 10.2 that I've got has got some alterations in it. Can't tell you whether they pack up in the 10.3, but It's not too much to expect a spell check to be used. I'd probably grump if it was using American English as opposed to UK. But there is proofreading which gets to the sense of things. There's proofreading that actually clarifies what speakers have said at briefing sessions where that's not clear this isn't good for councillors or those people who are watching or interested in it. If I go to background, I find the councils requested, etc. They're talking about the special meeting. Now, at the special meeting, there was a decision made and minutes issued. My question is why couldn't those minutes be directly coupled or included here? Because it would make far more sense rather than people scrambling to what did we do there and go to somewhere else. That's a fail. Thank oh. you, Vern. You have reached your three minutes. You're definitely welcome to provide your feedback in writing to the city, um, and we do take on board your feedback in relation to the presentation of the report. Okay. Can I just mention one other thing? Yes, absolutely. One short thing is right. to sum up. It's attachment three. This hasn't been accurate for about 23 years after the loops were introduced. And the loops were introduced to stop rat running from Williams Street through to Beaufort and Walcott Street. Thanks. Now, we, can, we will yep. come to those issues of accuracy when we get to the item. And uh, we take on board what you've said in relation to the map at attachment three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for I'm coming. I'm sorry and I can't to... speak faster because there is there is far more things which are very poor in this paper. And I, as as we have done before, Ben, if you're happy to provide anything in writing to the city, we can ensure that that's considered. I'll certainly be providing the CEO with further information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Are there any further speakers this evening? Okay. Uh, if I could just go to um, if there are any online uh, questions or statements that were submitted and also responses to previous public questions taken on notice. 
Through the chair, we received a public question from Jeff Cole of Mount Hawthorne and Dudley Meyer of Highgate. These will be responded to in the minutes of the next agenda meeting. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to item four, applications for leave of absence. Do any councillors here in the chamber or online have any applications for leave of absence for consideration? No? Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to item five, the receiving of petitions, deputations and presentations. Item 5.1. Uh, relates to a petition with 96 signatures, uh, as was presented by uh, Mr Leon Ferrius of North Perth earlier, requesting that Council end the trial of the diagonal diversion on Leake Street and Alma Road and reinstate the road to its previous condition, having regard for the disproportionate negative consequences of the diversion on local residents and the 466 signatures in opposition to the diversion in the online petition, the results of which are incorporated by reference into the petition presented. Um, clause 2.24 uh, petitions of the city of in, in the city of Vincent meeting procedures local law provides the following options for council on the um, receipt of a petition um, that uh, we will um, confine the, the presentation to the reading of the petition which I have just done I've satisfied that that's great um, and that the only motions that are able to be considered are that the petition be received that the petition be received and a report be prepared or that the petition be received and be referred for to a committee for consideration and report or finally that the petition be received and be dealt with by the council um, in accordance with uh, the presentation from Mr Ferrios, um, I wish to put forward for Council's consideration that the petition be received and a port be prepared um, uh, for the May Council meeting. Um, do I have a move? At council, moved by Council Lode and seconded by Councillor Castle. Uh, so that would be coming forward in the May Council meeting. Is there any debate? Oh, it's a procedural motion. We just got to vote straight away. Thank you, Councillor Loden. All right, I will put it. All those in favour? And all those against? Councillor Alexander, I'm sorry, I couldn't see if you were voting for or against on that item. The, the motion that's been put is to receive a report at the May meeting in relation to the petition presented. Uh, yes, happy to work for it to be presented. In May, if it can't be uh, sorted out earlier. Okay. Well, um, I guess that, that the motion that has been moved relates to um, re receiving a report and a, that a report being prepared, which would indicate that it would come to the next council meeting. Yeah, that's. Um, I'm happy with that. Thanks. I, I might just call it again for the you know um, reduce uh, any uncertainty. So we've got the motion that a report will be received and pre uh, prepared for the May Council meeting. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item six, confirmation of minutes. Um, can I have a mover and a seconder that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 14th of March 2023 be confirmed? Move Councillor Wallace, seconded Councillor Castle. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move on to item seven, announcements by the presiding member. Bear with me. Um, I don't get to do this very often. Um, so I'd just like to um, note that uh, this weekend marked the transition to Jeran, the Noongar, se Noongar season that heralds the break in the hot weather and the cooler nights and the overnight dew on the plants. Um, I note that the start of Jeran would have been celebrated by the Keen Vincent Gardeners who flocked to North Perth Common for another successful uh, native plant sale. I just wanted to um, call out Sarah, John and uh, Alana and the team for another great event. Um, who They were all present on the day to provide assistance and advice to the community. Um, and I think it's so valuable to have the team in place, uh, perhaps for those of us that aren't quite as good in the garden, so we can get some good advice there. I also wanted to draw everyone's attention to Youth Week, which is happening from the 14th to the 21st of April. Youth Week is a huge celebration of young people across WA, and I would urge uh, young people and, um, well, everyone really, to have a look at the uh, City of Vincent website for the events calendar. There's so much happening throughout Youth Week. There's music workshops, skate sessions, including skate sessions for um, women and girls. There's free movie screenings, weaving workshops, 
gaming workshops um, and in, there's also two fantastic events, Free to Be You at the Freedom Centre and Yarn Youth Festival at YHQ. This is in addition to the fantastic program of school holiday activities that are being put on throughout Vincent. So uh, no matter what age your uh, children or young people are, they are well taken care of in the city of Vincent during April. Um, just also to note a taster, which is pun intended, of the um, Mount Hawthorne Markets, which is going to be a, launching a taster event on the 14th of April in preparation for a successful season launch in September. So thank you very much, everybody. That's all from me for today. We'll now move on to item eight, declarations of interest. CEO, can I hand over to you for those? Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, there's a standing conflict of interest uh, from Councillor Apollo, who is an apology tonight. Uh, the only declaration of interest received was from yourself, Deputy Mayor, uh, proximity interest in relation to item 5.2, the review of design guidelines, noting the interest is that the Deputy Mayor resides within the area impacted by the Highgate design guidelines, which are proposed for rescission. And just to clarify, we have separated out the recommendations and the report so that the Deputy Mayor can be absent for the vote on that aspect of the design guidelines, but uh, be present for uh, the rest of the decision making. Thank you very much, CEO. Um, I'll now go around the chamber to ask councillors to call out any other items that they would like to um, pull out for debate, noting that so far we have 9.5, 10.1, and 13.1, and the Highgate Design Guidelines, which is 9.2. Councillor Hallett? No further. Councillor Wallace? Councillor Warner? Councillor Loden? Councillor Alexander, do you have any other items you'd like to pull out for debate this evening? Uh, no, just 10.2. Just okay, thank you very much. I will now get the CEO to read out the items for on block. <coughs> Councillor Gontoshevsky, can I just confirm it was 10.2 uh, and 3 that were pulled out, not 10.1, uh, 10.2? Not so it's 10 on this sheet that I have in front of me, it's 10.2 introduction of the first hour of, uh, fee in car parks outcome and 10.3 undertakings related to the animal local law. This may be in relation to what Mr Garden has raised. Is that the correct item numbers? Could, could I just make a comment, um, Madam Acting Mayor? Um, 10.1 and 6.2, um, what's the exact difference in those two? Sorry, Councillor Alexander, would you just mind clarifying? So 10.1 is, um, is, has not been pulled out for... Um, consideration that is the advertising of the amended policy related to CCTV. Sorry, I'm just I'm having a bit of trouble scrolling to what I need to. Um, we, we have a different order on docs on tap is probably okay. the issue. All right. What I might do is I will just I will read out the names of the items that are going to be pulled out for debate. So that is the uh, review of design guidelines. It is the proposed lease of 41 Britannia Road, Leaderville at Britannia Reserve for a telecommunications facility. It is the introduction of the first hour fee in car parks outcome, undertakings relating to the animal local law and the notice of motion uh, for the Alma and Leak diversion. May I? Uh, we're just going to check in relation to item 17.1 as to whether that needs to come out procedurally. Sorry, uh, as long as there's no question or debate required on 17.1 and it's not an absolute majority, it can be uh, decided on block. So can you just confirm for me that it's not an absolute majority item given that there hasn't been any questions or a call out for debate at this time? Uh, that's my understanding.
Uh, for you, Deputy Mayor, I'll now read out the item numbers uh, being proposed to be moved on block and apologies for those councillors who uh, had there's the numberings not correct on the docks on tap system. Uh, we'll make sure that doesn't happen again. So the items to be moved on block include items 9.1, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26
not, it'll be in, in docs and tap somewhere for you, Councillor Alexander, <laughs> and on the email. Uh, the recommendation be added as follows that council approves the rent from the lease relating to telecommunications facility of facility of portion of lot 41 in brackets 43 Britannia Road leader will be to applied to the public open space reserve and I'll speak to it if I get a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Hallett. Thank you. Um, so if uh, assuming this all goes ahead and uh, the plans come through and we we approve this, uh, these funds would be generally allocated into uh, municipal funds. Um, given this impact is being seen in a public open space, I think it's appropriate that we allocate those funds to then help create new public open space. Um, I do note administration's comments that we could choose to um, allocate funds from our general budget to do this. Um, but given we've had a public open space uh, reserve for about five years now and have not really allocated any money into it at all, this seems like an opportune time to create an ongoing sustaining source of revenue to go into the public open space. Um, over a 10-year period of the lease, you'd see over half a million dollars go into this, which in 10 years' time we could be creating a new public open space for something out of something like that in the city and then do that every 10 years thereafter. So um, I would ask for your support for this. Thank you. Councillor Hallett. Um, thank you. I'm happy to support this amendment. Um, I think there's something important about when initiatives are implemented that um, are bringing in funds that there's a, a proximity to, I guess, where something's detracted, that it can, um, I guess, counteract that in some way. So I can see this as a, as a reasonable change. Councillor Alexander. Oh, look, I, I think it's uh, totally unnecessary and somewhat smacks of, of virtual signalling because I believe all councillors are interested in um, approve of public open open space, but this money should, like other monies, go into municipal funds, which allows administration and council then to use it for the critical issues of the day. Just squirrelling it away in in, in a public open space fund, I think, um, you know, sends the wrong messages, you know, is unnecessary. And, you know, I support what the administration has said. Thank you, Councillor Alexander. Any further comments from councillors? Um, look, I'll speak to the amendment briefly. Um, I understand um, Councillor Alexander's position, but I, I feel that... Um, and I understand administration's comment, I feel that whilst we don't have a policy at this stage in relation to um, income derived from the disposal of land, through, including through lease, um, that administration's response in relation to this item is that it should go into municipal funds. I think that council has um, noted that we need a policy position on this and I think that decisions like this, which are I feel consistent with the open space strategy, and also consistent with uh, discussions that have been had in this chamber around previous leases in that we want to link uh, need and nexus, we want to link disposal and uh, acquisition. Um, I think that it's appropriate that we um, use our individual decisions um, towards this end um, until we have a documented policy position on this matter. So um, I'm supportive of the amendment as it stands. Um, can't, no, it's an amendment. No uh, closing debate. Uh, no further comments. I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? All those against? I uh, note the amendment is carried with Councillor Alexander voting against. Is there any further comments on the um, substantive as amended? No, in that case, I will put the item. All those in favour? And all those against? That's passed with Councillor Alexander voting against. We'll now move on to item 10.2, introduction of $1 first hour fee in car parks outcome. May I have a mover and a seconder for this item? Move Councillor Warner. Seconded Councillor Loden. Councillor Warner. Um, I just wanted to foreshadow that I have an amendment. I'd like to move on this. Uh, but I'll, I'll wait to see if Councillor Loden would like to say. Uh, not unless you've got something to say first. Okay, Councillor Warner is uh, foregoing her right to speak first, noting that as the mover, she does have the right to close debate at the end. So, Councillor Loden. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that we've had a large uh, amount of feedback from the community on this and mostly in the negative, absolutely. Um, there are amendments coming forward, which I'd like to see come forward. Um, I think this will be an interesting discussion as we work through the various amendments, um, but overall, we do need to address this issue. Uh, at the time when we introduced this measure, it was a measure to, to help close a gap in our budget as well as address parking challenges. Uh, so if this is now removed, then it is beholden on council to, to figure out how we would how we would close that budget gap. Uh, if, if all things otherwise were kept equal in our current budget and we had not introduced this, we would have seen a higher rate in the dollar passed on to residents. And whilst we are always in that position of finding cost savings, we should always be finding cost savings not because of an arbitrary number, because of uh, because it's either it's surplus to the needs of our community or is not a justified expense. So where we get to this discussion and debate as part of our budget process, which we've been going through and we'll be bringing uh, to council uh, prior to the end of the financial year, we will need to talk through this in great detail. But without a counterfactual cost saving, that will ultimately either shift to increasing our parking levies uh, across the city or passing that that cost on to residents effectively. Thank you. Before I move on, um, given Councillor Loden, you did raise the um, issue of revenue and costs. Um, I might just ask the CEO to provide some advice to Council in relation to the change in the report around the revenue from the uh, first hour fee of $1 into car parks. Uh, through the chair, uh, make a point that uh, the initial work that was presented at the uh, council briefing last week was analysing simply the first hour free, didn't consider the additional income that was derived from uh, the dollar for extended stays beyond the first hour. And as a consequence, uh, that does show that the revenue collected from the first hour across both the first hour and subsequent hours uh, during the uh, period was 435,000. Uh, and that's anticipated to be 870,000 per annum. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any questions on that or any other councillors that wish to uh, discuss this item or debate this? Uh, yes, I would. Madam Acting Mayor. Yes, Councillor Alexander, go ahead. Um, when this, uh, and I've got to say, I have no confidence in the figures and I think some of the information presented has moved and come at the last moment. And so uh, I am concerned about the analysis per se. But when, I've got a long memory, and when this was, was introduced, and we're now seeing we talk of it's 870 and including the, the second hour, well, it did when when we first, or when some people decided that this was a good idea. Um, how can they conclude that the data did not include other transactions that went beyond the dollar? In the beginning, it was a very easy question: what was the number of transactions lasting one hour or less? Transactions in twenty one twenty two, and what is the number in twenty two twenty three? So that's what the analysis was asked for not to suddenly add the second hour and things like that. It was a very simple equation that was asked for. And now we've, we, we, we chop and change and add things on. And, you know, I really think that you know, we need to get someone independent. Uh, you know, these numbers have been presented so poorly that, you know, I, I certainly don't trust them. Um, I know Councillor Oropolo also uh, did a study which showed how vehemently people were against the uh, the uh, introduction of uh, or getting rid of you know one hour free parking and adding the, the one dollar but despite the, those overwhelming comments in both studies I might add the council one and the one by council I operate um, the council has gone ahead with it so you know I've, I just have some problems with what um, Mr Barris has said um, adding this on at the last moment and instead of coming up with about 435, come up with, with 870. And that wasn't in the original study. Thank you, Councillor Alexander. Councillors? Councillor Castle? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I understand there's amendments to be put and I may have further comment in relation to those, but as the substantive currently stands, um, I'm somewhat supportive of, of the wording as it currently stands because I think it goes no further than to note the results of the study that's happened so far. I have some issues with the data that's presented. I don't believe it shows us a clear picture in a clear way to make a decision. Um, and, and I think that is partly because it is quite a complex issue and it's very difficult to make draw conclusions from um, the data that we have to say that people who stayed for longer than an hour is, is um, revenue that we would not have received if one hour was free. Um, there's a lot of variables at play here and it's quite difficult to draw conclusions, which I note that um, that was an issue with the report last week and this week that it, it's very hard to actually show the causation between the change in parking and the impact that's being felt by the businesses. I really do um, appreciate the comments that we've had in the gallery about how this has impacted businesses, particularly in Mount Lawley. And I think that it is something that we need to review um, because it, it may well be that this is having um, a very detrimental effect and um, a change to what is currently in place might be needed in some areas of, of the city to address that. But I'm not comfortable making a decision in a vacuum um, when this has an impact on our full budget. I, I don't feel that I am in a position to commit either to continuing with a dollar for the first hour or reverting immediately to first hour free without um, considering this in the context of the entire budget. I don't um, think that it's appropriate for this council to make a decision on fees and charges in April when we are about to embark on a budget or we're already embarking on a budget process. Um, I certainly think that this report is important information for us to have in preparation for that budget process. And I would be really, um, would really welcome further analysis as we get closer to that point. Um, but I don't think we have the necessary information right now to commit one way or the other. And even if we did commit, we would still be going into a budget process where that could be reversed. So my preference would be to note the results of this analysis, perhaps talk about some further commentary that administration might be able to prepare for us and, um, and give it quite serious consideration during the budget process. Uh, the CEO would like to make a comment. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, I did just want to clarify that uh, the administration did update this report, not just to reflect the change in the parking revenue, uh, but this was raised in the briefing about what was in the briefing as recommendation two. Uh, we did remove the recommendation about it continuing, uh, and that's been replaced following consultation with businesses in Mount Lawley about uh, investigating the provision of more short-term free bays of 15 and 30 minutes, particularly in uh, the Mount Lawley car park. And We've been in discussions with um, both uh, the RGA and Fresh Provisions about that. So I guess just um, for clarity, administration's recommendation currently, as it currently stands, leaves the setting of fees and charges in the next financial year to council to be considered as part of the annual budget process. And the recommendation does allow for um, administration to engage with uh, businesses prior to the budget setting um, on the configuration of the short-term free bays adjacent to the retailers within the Mount Lawley Town Centre. Thank you. Councillor Hallett. Yeah, just some questions. Following up on that, um, could administration advise what is the speed at which um, that additional consultation and the provision of additional short-term bays would occur? Through you, Deputy Mayor, we, we've already uh, provided a proposal to the uh, IGA and uh, we're also in discussions with Fresh Provisions and the Alexander Building about increasing the number of 30-minute free bays adjacent to the shops there. Uh, I'm just looking at the director. I think we've got delegation to make those changes uh, and we can do that as soon as we can get a sign marking contractor and as soon as we have the agreement of the uh, of the local businesses. What would be the time frame for that? Uh, 
Uh, we, yeah, through the chair, we, we can endeavor to get that progressed during April. Um, thank you. Um, can I also ask about the um, the deed with Silverleaf Investments and if administration can give a little bit more information about their understanding of the ramifications? Uh, yes, I could probably address that to some degree. However, just making a note that the manager of Rangers uh, is planning to be meeting with Silverleaf to discuss the current environment because the the agreement doesn't actually ref currently reflect uh, the actual physical location of bays and the allocation of bays, uh, and it certainly does need to be updated to reflect the current environment uh, at the moment. So those uh, discussions are intended to be had either later this week, Thursday, with Silverleaf to get some clarity around the agreement and whether there needs to be some amendments to the agreement to reflect uh, uh, the current arrangements. Thank you. Um, look, I think in particular in relation to the feedback from Mount Lawley, but I guess partly North Perth as well, um, I am very cognizant that there is a whole um, bunch of factors um, and parking may well be one of them um, that's impacting on these businesses. I guess my the main thing that I am hearing is that the... Um, that there's an increase in people staying longer and that is of benefit to some types of businesses. But the key issue here is businesses that are reliant on a lot of churn on short-term base. Um, so I guess I am supportive of the new wording of the um, motion in relation to this. I guess I'm wanting to be comfortable that that will happen as quickly as possible if it's um, approved. Um, and I think then it can be revisited um, in the context of budget discussion more broadly. Um, I don't think that I am supportive of changing something in one area. Um, so I think a consistent approach should be better. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. Councillor Alexander, you've got your hand up. You have spoken on this substantive. Well, I answered a question to um, Mr Barris. I haven't actually spoken on the whole issue. Um, and I also have an amendment to make. Okay. So you... I'm happy to speak now and make that amendment or handle it however you would suggest. Uh, why don't you put forward your amendment to Council Alexander? Okay, and then the reasons for it. Um, so should I put the reasons for it beforehand? Um, I guess I'll just perhaps uh, read the wording of the amendment so that, um, or is it on the screen in the chamber? I don't see that screen. It's not. Okay, I'll just read it out for the for the Chamber, Councillor Alexander, and then if you get a seconder, you can speak to it. Um, the amendment is that recommendation for a new recommendation for be inserted um, that requests that the first day of free be reintroduced in the car parks listed in the report as soon as possible. 4.2, that the city widely and professionally advertised the fact that first day of free has been introduced in those car parks. No, 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 no. Um... Madam Acne Mayor, um, it's just four that I'm putting forward first. Oh, sorry. So is this 4.4? 4. 4? Well, four, four stands alone. Um, so the wording that I have here is 4.1, 4 4.2, 4.3, 4.4 and 4.5. Which um, item do you wish to move? Um, four. Request the first hour free to be ripped reintroduced into the car parks listed in the report as soon as possible. Okay, thank you for that. Um, that has been an amendment that has been moved by Councillor Alexander. Do I have a seconder for the amendment? Seconded Councillor Warner. Councillor Alexander? Okay, I just wanted to go through some of this and part of it um, includes that, uh, you know, the Mayor said that if this doesn't work, we'll change it right back. Well, you know, the analysis shows there's 50,000 less customers have turned up to our businesses. Now, that's people voting with their feet. Now, 50,000 customers is a lot, something like 16% of people's businesses. And so these are people that are putting up their own money on a day-to-day -day basis, not, not working at a public service or anything else, you know, and they're requiring, um, you know, us as councillors to act in, I think, what is a responsible way. And, 
you know, this is somewhat of an advantage that Vincent has. And now other councils are doing the same thing. And by taking it away, uh, people have uh, decided to, for example, go straight up Beaufort Street and go to Second Avenue and go to IGA and Second Avenue. Um, or they'll go straight through Walcott Street and up to Mackenzie's Chemist instead of the one on the corner. And this is, uh, this is, this is happening. And um, just bear with me while I, I read out a, a ratepayers' letter, which uh, come you know directly to me. And this was this was soon after that uh, this was implicated uh, implemented by the city of Vincent. And it says, as with great dismay, I know the city of Vincent have changed the parking parameters in their car parks. I see it as needless money grabbing at the expense of residents, visitors, and small businesses. I'm a resident of the city of Vincent, and so pay my rates. I like to shop locally and make a point of doing so whenever I can. For instance, I would go and get my hour free in Ango Street car park. I'd see my physiotherapist or I might see my podiatrist. I would meet a friend for coffee or go to the, the post. I will no longer frequent these businesses as I will not pay for parking. I would go, rather go somewhere else where can I park for free. Similarly, I would go to Fresh Provisions, duck in and get some groceries. Go to Lawley's, grab some bread and have a coffee. Shop in any number of smaller stores in the vicinity. I will no longer be doing that. I've noticed that since the introduction of paid parking, that car parks are mostly empty when previously they were busy. I've spoken to business owners and they have noticed the big decline in trade since the introduction of paid parking. And keeping in mind, there was two studies done beforehand that said, don't do this. Continuing on, the decision to take away the free hour of parking will impact many people and talking to neighbours and friends, there is a lot of outrage. I remember years ago when Subiaco introduced paid parking and it soon became a graveyard with businesses closing and people choosing to go elsewhere. It has taken years to recover from this. Such a short-sighted and greedy move with a negative impact to all. It is, is it worth the dollar to your coffers? Do you ask business and residents before this sorry, did you ask businesses and residents before this introduction of paid parking was introduced? Did you think about rate powers who already pay for the privilege to live in the city of Vincent, asking them now to pay for the privilege of shopping locally and supporting the local businesses? Do you think about the consequences and the long-term effect we'll have on the city of Vincent in the future? And to finish off, said I would ask that you reconsider this initiative and be generous and promote local shopping by bringing back the hour free in your parking areas. And there's many of our study to show the value of free and that people are deciding with their feet not to shop in the city of Vincent. And as I said, I have some concerns and I believe there's a number of ways that uh, the revenue can, uh, can be made up and that, that can be done by understand that uh, interim rates, for example, are, are uh, at 370000 at the moment uh, in the books or on the books, but are actually up to 495000 So there's 125 spare there. Now, I'm also not sure what happened with the budget over Christmas. There seemed to be an error of $1,019,000 uh, on the side of Vincent, i.e. it was a good error if there's uh, such a thing. So... I really think that, you know, council need to consider um, the one-hour free parking and it's, I think, a disastrous backward step if, if we don't. Thank you, Councillor Alexander. Councillor Warner. Uh, thank you. Uh, look, I was um, uh, foreshadowing doing an amendment, which is uh, pretty much a word for word for what uh, Councillor Alexander has put forward. Basically, um, uh, I'm not supportive of continuing the first hour free of car parking. Um, I think that the introduction of this trial has been universally unpopular with residents and businesses alike across all of Vincent. It has encouraged parking on streets as an alternative to paid parking and that's caused flow on traffic effects. It hasn't yielded the expected income to justify the impact and has exposed the council to potential other implications by not complying with the existing deed with Silverleaf. And there may be other potential deed holders across the city where this also applies. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that the, uh, the information that was presented to me to make an informed decision back in July was actually not 
completely correct. Um, I'm also going to I'm going to fly the uh, the brain fog flag and just say a couple of things here don't make sense to me. Um, why why are we being told that if this policy is rescinded that there will be a budget shortfall when um, I'm not sure why this money has already been allocated into the budget where it should be, this is a trial. This was a six month trial and should be considered as a provisional income, not as a, uh, a settled case. Um, and at no time was it ever brought to my attention that the parking areas had other deed holders and the obligations that come with that. Um, I'm, concern that we are already in breach of these obligations by imposing this trial and it's been very clear that Silverleaf will not support extending this current situation. Um, to quote, no alterations to the parking levy in the Grosvenor Road parking lot should be undertaken with at least, without at least one month's notice and if agreement is not reached the deed will end. Mr O'Brien from Silverleaf has clearly indicated in person and in writing he has received no consultation and does not wish to proceed with this levy. And this could result in the loss of approximately 40% of the available bays in the Mount Lawley precinct. Um, I've inquired as to whether this situation applies elsewhere within the city of Vincent. Um, I've not been advised officially, but I'm concerned that it may, and a similar situation may be repeated in other areas. Um, uh, uh, I'm not, keen to entertain the idea of retaining the $1 first hour policy in some parts of Vincent and removing it in others. I believe this would lead to further disillusionment and confusion in our community. And quite simply, I feel like this current situation is not sustainable. We committed to doing a six month trial. We have completed that trial. We need to make a decision on what we're doing with that. To continue would be um, without a, a decision uh, would be uh, contrary to what we to what we agreed to do. Um, I also just want to flag that I don't think that just offering uh, some places in Mount Lawley extra short-term bays is, is actually going to fix the problem that they are experiencing. I think it's a bigger issue than that. So um, whilst I appreciate that there's a potential um, assistance there, I don't think that's actually going to solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Warner. Councillors, Councillor Wallace. Thanks, Chair. Um, look, I think a dollar for an hour's parking is a pretty reasonable fee to recover for the services that have been provided. Um, the cost of maintaining the car parking and the opportunity cost of dedicating public land for the purposes of vehicle parking in support of private businesses are borne by all ratepayers and recouping some of that from the drivers that use the parking, I think is pretty fair and is consistent with our accessible city strategy. I'm also pretty skeptical that $1 is a significant driver of driver behavior. Um, the drop in spending in Mount Lawley does stand out from the data that was presented, although I'm skeptical that that can be entirely attributed to paying a dollar for some parking. Um, but I would have really appreciated some more detailed consideration of other potential factors that could have uh, influenced that drop off, um, either through consultation with businesses or discussing with the town teams prior to bringing this item to council. Um, it's, it's really hard to make any decisions on the basis of just these few graphs. Um, having said all that, um, I've got to acknowledge that it's been pretty consistently unpopular amongst all stakeholders that have got in touch to date, you know, business owners, private residents, um, this kind of thing. Um, and I did miss the briefing last week, but I'm quite confused by the amount of financial benefit this policy uh, will provide to the city, but it does seem negligible. Um, so I think on that basis, I do actually support this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Councillors? Okay, may I just get some advice in relation to this amendment um, uh, in terms of that um, if this amendment is passed and it becomes the substantive as amended, that the amended motion would then require to be a majority decision or is um, that the motion is not particularly clear in relation to um, it says as soon as possible. So could I just get some information on what that means in terms of, I believe it's the mover's intention that as soon as possible means this budget year. Um, but could you please outline the implications for that in relation to the current fees and charges? Uh, 
through the chair um, to note uh, essentially to change from a dollar to zero dollars for the first hour free that essentially means that there is a a change in the fee uh, the Lo act requires that a local government uh, may by absolute majority uh, recover a fee or charge for any of its goods or services it provides such as car parking uh, and that fees and charges to be imposed when adopting the annual budget uh, uh, or should it be imposed during a financial year or amended from time to time during a financial year? And they needs to be that change needs to be by absolute majority. It also notes that um, uh, should it uh, seek to impose or amend a fee, that it needs to uh, the local government needs to advertise its intention to do so. Uh, through a uh, local public notice and the date of which uh, that change is to be implemented. Uh, so in respect to the current uh, amendment, some clarity around that space may be required as to when that fee and char that change uh, needs to be implemented. In respect to a practical change uh, uh, from the administration's point of view, should that change be supported by absolute majority, uh, the it would take approximately a week to change the parking station machines. And I've had it confirmed that uh, when we changed the signs last time, we changed them in a way that uh, they should not require any change in the fluctuation of fees and charges for car parks. So hopefully that answers the question. Sort of. Um, <laughs> yes, could I, could I make a comment on that? Um, Councillor Alexander, you've already spoken on this amendment. You would need to ask a question. Well, could Mr Varris... I mean, that seemed like a long ramble. Could we ask Mr DeVaris to put that in succinct terms? Because this was a trial. And is it true that if it's a trial, it was something that, A, shouldn't have been necessarily added into the budget, as Councillor Warner has mentioned? And when I say as soon as possible, it should be able to be done next week because this was a trial. So... You know, we, we don't uh, want to thank have... Thank you, Councillor Alexander. I think we've got enough in terms of your question. Um, so um, I correct you're asking in relation to the funds received. This is furthering on from Councillor Warner's question around um, the incorporation of any funds received into this year's budget and then also to request some additional clarity in relation to administration's understanding of what as soon as possible means in this amendment. Uh, through the chair, um, I'll be as succinct as I can. I understand when the uh, fee and charge was adopted, it was by absolute majority, and when it was adopted, there was no time limit on when and how long that fee would be imposed. To change that fee from $1 for the first hour to zero, that will require a decision which is an absolute majority. As a consequence of that decision, the city needs to advertise by a local public notice its intention to do so and the date on which that new fee will be implemented. Uh, given that local public notice is usually uh, 14 days, you would need to uh, uh, advertise that. There is no, um, just for clarity, it's not a public notice that requires feedback. It's just in, an inform. Uh, we'd need to prepare the advertisement, have it published, uh, and set a date after the 14 days in which the new fee would come in operation, and that new fee would come in operation at the same time that the machines would be changed to accommodate that fee. And based on advice from uh, the Rangers team would take approximately one week to set the machines up to make that change. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Alexander, do you have any further questions on this item? To see your hand up. Yes, yes, I do. Um, this is questions on the amendment? This is a question. This was a trial. 
So the question is, a trial's a trial. The trial's not embedding it in the system. Councillor Alexander. Um, well, I dispute what, what, what I Mr. Barrett appreciate where, you, where you're at, but we do um, have to stick to our meeting procedures. Um, so um, I believe the answer that has been provided was that when the fee and charge was adopted in the annual budget process for FY23, that there was no end date put on that charge. So to end the trial would require an amendment to the fees and charges. And that is what you have put forward in your amendment. And my Although understanding the trial of the six, response the trial was six that months. That, that's why we're examining it now, because the trial was six months. Okay. Thank if we you. don't adopt the trial, we should go back to what was before the trial. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess, could we please just get some procedural clarification in relation to the question in about whether this was a adopted as a trial fee and charge or whether this was adopted as a fee and charge? Uh, through the Chair, if you can give me a moment just to reinvestigate the uh, resolution at the budget to make sure that uh, the circumstance of the fee and charge adoption was uh, uh, solely based on a six-month period. Okay, thank you. I'll Could speak... I make one further comment? Uh, you can't make any further comments on this, Councillor Alexander, because it's an amendment. Um, you're only able to ask questions. If you don't mind, I'd, I will speak on the amendment while the um, Acting Executive Director is finding out some more information in relation to your question. Um, so I am pleased to see that the amendment hasn't been amended, uh, sorry, that the um, overarching motion has been amended by administration uh, since the briefing because I felt that I was not in a position to make a decision with any certainty tonight. And as a result, I don't feel I can support this amendment tonight either. Um, it has been raised um, both last week and this week by members of the chamber and by councillors around the um, way that the information in this report has been presented and the, um, I guess, lack of direct engagement with affected businesses. Um, I appreciate um, that the, my understanding and recollection of the intent at the time was that this would be adopted as a fee and charge within the budget for FY23. And we requested that there be a report to come back so that that could be included in our decision-making through the budget process for FY24. And um, that's, I will await clarification of that. It was a while ago, but that has been my understanding. At this point in time, I will be upfront that the information presented and the concerns raised by uh, businesses and the concerns raised at the time by members of the community um, certainly lead me to believe that we need to um, make some changes. Um, I do not have a fixed view as yet as to what those changes are and I would like to have some time to do some scenario planning in the establishment of this budget with a view to uh, making a sound decision on uh, how the city could maintain its objective around financial sustainability and meeting our obligations in relation to um, the maintenance of our assets and, and, and other um, key objectives of the city, um, meet our objectives in relation to our sustainable environment and accessible city strategy, but also um, recognise that um, economic development is also within the purview of local government, and I think we need to be really considerate of that. Um, I would also like to see some scenario planning around um, the introduction of different fees between 6am and 6pm. As my observation is that we have car parks that may be full during the evening of people who are coming in to spend more extended times in our town centres 
and um, we, we probably want to be encouraging some of those to jump in an alternate mode of transport. Um, and But I do absolutely accept that there has been a level of inconvenience um, experienced by the community. Um, and I think whilst there is some concern about the numbers and which numbers which and et cetera, uh, and we don't necessarily have causality we do we we may have correlation it's clear to see that there are businesses that over the past year are doing it tough and uh looking to see a return to the previous system i don't know at this stage if i can support that um but i certainly am supportive of some change um it's a shame we don't have our precinct parking management plan coming forward this financial year that would allow us to maintain a um a, a really solid decision on the basis of evidence so I don't support the amendment as put forward tonight, but um, I absolutely support further discussion and engagement with business in preparation of the budget and recognise that I think there is a need for change. Uh, Acting Executive Director, do you have a response to Councillor Alexander's question? Uh, thank you, Chair. In uh, reviewing the decision for uh, the, at the special council meeting where the budget was adopted, uh, the uh, resolution was to... Uh, introduce the $1 for the first hour free uh, for the financial year as detailed in the attachment, which was the fees and charges table. The fees and charges didn't show uh, a, a date, end date in respect to that. Uh, so it assumes for the full financial year, not a trial period. Thank you. Councillor Castle. Thank you. Um, I have a question, but I also just I found this, the same clause, which I thought might be helpful to read because it has clarified things for me. The amendment that was carried added a clause that said request administration monitor the impact to number of transactions and revenue following the change to a dollar for first hour to ascertain any detrimental impact on occupancy or using city car parks and provide a report back to council by April 2023 in time for setting fees and charges for the 2023-2024 annual budget. Um, so while I think there probably was some discussion about it appearing as a trial, that was not the council's decision, um, and I think that what we're seeing today in the unamended um, report is a reflection of council's decision uh, in that it provides a report but then uh, is for the purpose of, in, of informing the 2023-2024 annual budget. I did have a question um, around the budget process this year. My recollection in previous years is that fees and charges was one of the first things that we've dealt with and possibly made a decision on earlier but I'm could be wrong about that. Um, and I'm just wondering, under the program that's intended for this budget, when will we be um, considering fees and charges? Uh, through the chair, um, yes, at, at the next budget workshop on the 2nd of May, uh, council will be provided with the entire budget, which will include uh, proposed fees and charges as well. We have provided the preliminary fees and charges to council at the previous workshop, but the, the full budget will come together at the next workshop. So will that decision on fees and charges, that's intended to be made in conjunction with the entire budget, not separately? Okay. Um, I would, uh, uh, you know, I spoke to the substantive. My reasons for not supporting this amendment are the same as those. Um, but I would request um, with the discussion that's been had tonight that administration does not prepare the budget with an assumption that the dollar first hour free or first hour will continue. Um, that's not something that is clearly not agreed upon in this chamber. And I think we need to have options available to see what that will look like with and without um, the dollar charge um, so that we're able to be properly informed. Thank you, Councillor Castle. Is there anyone who hasn't spoken on the amendment that wishes to speak? Is there anyone that has additional questions on the amendment that would like to raise questions? No. Otherwise, I will. Oh, Councillor Alexander, do you have a further question? 
Councillor Alexander, you're muted. We can't hear your question. Sorry. I'll try again. I would ask the council and administration, do they recall the mayor in a range of, of media interviews saying, if it doesn't work, we'll change it back again? And then she said that 83% of people were coming out of other places other than Vincent. So two things. One, you know, the, the mayor has said we'll change it back if it doesn't work. Councillor Alexander, um, could you just make sure that you're focusing on a question, please? And, okay, the question uh, is... And I guess do questions think, do around think, do you recall is possibly not Okay, really well, the question is, do you think 50,000 less customers is a reason to change it back? Um, Councillor Alexander, administration have put forward a response to your amendment and have also put forward this report um, and the, um, re the uh, substantive has removed any um, words from the recommendation around the retention or change. So at this point in time, council is being asked to consider the substantive that relates to a report that has been presented a request to engage with Mount Lawley businesses and a request to engage with North Perth Parking through the presentation of the precinct parking management plan. So I'm unsure how your question can actually be answered as a question because I feel that it has actually been put forward in the uh, recommendation that is there as the substantive and the response to your, your amendment. So with respect, I feel that we should be moving on to the vote on this amendment um, because unless you have any specific questions that relate to whether you are going to support or not support this item, then I feel that we appear to all be at, you know, we've all spoken and we appear to be at, appear to be at like clarity on our way forward. So I'm going to put the vote. All those in favour of the amendment that... Uh, requests uh, a new item four be added that requests first hour free be reintroduced in the car parks listed in the report as soon as possible. All those in favour? That is one, two, three, four. All those against? That is three. I call the amendment carried. We are now back to the substantive as amended. Is there any Just a further? clarification? Isn't that an absolute majority decision? No, my understanding is that. The amendment, would I be correct, is that the substantive needs to be an absolute majority decision. The amendment itself would now, what was not an absolute majority decision. Okay, we are now going to the substantive. Is there anyone who has not spoken on the substantive that wishes to? So, sorry, could we read out what the substantive is? The substantive is now everything that was in the um motion that the recommendation that was put forward to admin by administration with an additional item four that says requests that the first hour free be reintroduced in the car parks listed in this report as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hallett. Um, is administration's point of view that therefore um, clause two is no longer needed? Because it, as it relates to providing more bays, if everything is essentially going to be a short-term bay? To you, Deputy Mayor, uh, we've already booked a meeting in with uh, the owner of the Alexander Building for Thursday. We'll keep that appointment. Anything further, Councillor Hallett? Okay, I will speak to the substantive. This is very challenging for me. Um, I don't support change right now, I do support change. I will be seeking to ensure that within the budget process this year that the city does look to support 
ongoing economic development within our town centres by having uh, a parking system that's responsive to the challenges that are faced by um, local businesses and residents. I will be really upfront that I'm not at this point um, certain that that includes the reintroduction of first hour free across the car parks. And um, I, so I don't support this um, item as it stands at this point in time um, because I feel that there is um, some challenges with um, reintroducing something potentially at the end of a month and then reintroducing something else in June or whenever we adopt the budget and the fees and charges. Um, I felt that engaging at this point in time with local businesses around um, short-term bays in close proximity to their businesses was a good first step towards recognising that that change needs to happen. And as a huge fan of the 15-minute bay, I'm always advocating for that regardless of whether we have first hour free in our car parks because it really does encourage people to just do the duck in to pick up things on your way home from work or school or wherever. Um, so I don't support um, this amendment. Uh, may I ask a question of administration procedurally around um, what happens if this substantive, sorry, I don't support the substantive, what happens if this substantive fails? Uh, through the chair, should the substantive fails, we'll have a, in effect a no decision and it would uh, uh, require someone to move a motion uh, that could be the officer's recommendation uh, to get a decision on the books. Is a no decision in effect that the fees and charges are then set through the annual budget process? Uh, sorry, uh, through the chair. Yes, it could be taken as that. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, so we have the substantive. Is there anyone that has not spoken on the substantive and wishes to do so? Councillor Wallace. Thank you, Chair. I, I don't have too much more to say. I just wanted to add that I feel like this has been somewhat prematurely brought to Council. I really do wish that items two and three had been done prior to this report coming to Council, but I also feel I have enough information in hand to make a decision which is not to support this or to support it as amended I should say support it as amended thank you that's fine we do you're saying that you're supporting the motion as amended which is to um, remove to reintroduce first hour free in all car parks as soon as possible okay all right uh councillor where am I Councillor Warner, I had Councillor Warner is moving. You haven't spoken. Would you have the opportunity to close debate? Um, honestly, my brain fog is going nuts at the moment, so I, I'm trying to catch up with everything. Um, basically, I, th I think Councillor Wallace summed it up for me pretty much, pretty clearly. Um, I support the amendment that we did, and um, I'd really like to just, uh, I, I, I believe, yes, you're right, we should have dealt with a few things before beforehand I think this has been um, uh, really unclarified and this has caused a lot of confusion for people and certainly for myself so um, yeah I, I I just want to uh, I'd love to just sort this one out if we could. Thank you Councillor Warner that closes debate I will put the item as amended all those in favour that's four all those against that's three as the item is an absolute majority item, a absolute majority of council is required, which would be a vote in the affirmative of five council members. So as a result, the motion is lost. Is there an alternate motion that any councillor wishes to move? Councillor Loden. Uh, given we will not get to an absolute majority position, I move the officer recommendation, which I will vote in support of. Technical, but do I have a seconder? Councillor Castle. Councillor Loden, do you wish to speak on this alternate? Councillor Castle. 
So just to be clear for the chamber and for Councillor Alexander at home, um, the Councillor Loden has moved the officer recommendation in the report, so not as amended. Does anyone wish to speak on this item? Okay, I will call it. Uh, all those in favour of the motion, the substantive motion as put forward by administration in the agenda papers. That's four. And all the, sorry, and Councillor Wallace, I was just going to call that vote again. Councillor Loden has moved a motion as an alternative that is the, as an alternate motion that is as was put forward by administration in the agenda papers, not as was amended previously. So, Can someone read that out, please? Um, Councillor Alexander, it is as was in your agenda papers. It commences with item one, notes the following key findings. Then there is item two, requests that administration liaises with Mount Lawley Town Centre retailers regarding their concerns. And item three, requests that the CEO addresses through the precinct parking management plan review the negative impact parking has had in residential streets in North Perth. Well, could I, could I just say in our notes we've got here, we've got 6.2 introduction of first hour, 10.2 introduction of first hour. So which is it? Through the chair, 6.2 was the briefing agenda item reference number. 10.2 is the council meeting agenda item reference number. So we are currently considering item 10.2 on the council agenda paper. Which and may... we have reverted to the substantive recommendation. So this is that there is no decision made. It will no positive affirmation rate made in relation to first hour $1 in car parks and that the um, effect of this motion would be that the matter will be dealt with through the annual budget process and setting fees and charges through that process. Do any councillors wish to speak to this motion? No, in that case, I will put it. All those in favour? That's four. All those against? That's three against. I call the motion carried. Thank you very much, everybody. I look forward to discussing parking as we commence our annual budget setting process. We will now move on in relation to item 10.3, undertakings related to the Animal Local Law 2022. Can I have a mover and a seconder for this item? Councillor Hallett moved. Councillor Wallace seconded. Thank you. I support the um, motion as recommended. Just a question generally about um, whether we normally access legal advice on local laws at the time of drafting prior to submission to the Joint Standing Committee. And that was raised by the gallery in terms of um, the frequency at which they've been knocked back recently. Uh, thank you. Through the Chair, yes, we do. Uh, and in fact, uh, for the animal local law, we had in fact engaged legal advice in forming that uh, local law. That's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> um, I agree with the concerns that were raised by the Joint Standing Committee, so um, I look forward to seeing it um, revisited and come back. Councillor Castle. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a question. Um, My apologies, Councillor Wallace. Did you oh, want to so speak as the seconder? Yeah, um, look, I guess it is disappointing to get this knocked back again. Um, procedurally, it seems a little bit backwards that this uh, standing committee that has this power to not veto, but I guess knock back these amendment doesn't, um, this policy, sorry, doesn't get an opportunity to review and provide that advice prior, given the extensive periods of time um, that are involved in advertising, working things through admin and stuff like that. So um, I guess that's a state pro government process that could be improved. Um, uh, another state government process that could be improved is a revision of the CAT Act. I mean, I, was a, I didn't actually plan that segue, but it worked well. <laughs> um, you know, like the, we had the statutory review a number of years ago. Um, all of the key stakeholder groups were in agreement that further powers need to be given to local government to create cat prohibited areas. That those stakeholders included representatives from cat owners. Um, everybody's on the same page. Um, you know, I guess the constant refrain from the state government is that there's a full legislative agenda. I see no reason 
why what should be theoretically an uncontroversial change like this uh, couldn't be done. Um, so yeah, really wishing some action from our local member and state government. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Councillor Castle, my apologies for that. Oh, no, then um, that's fine, um, Councillor Wallace stole my thunder because <laughs> my question was going to be around what involvement we might be able to have in in advocating to state government. There's clearly a demand at this council and at a number of councils and in the community in general for better um, regulation of cats in particular. And I say that as the owner of a very gorgeous kitten that who is indoor only. Um, but I think, you know, it's clear that this is, is something that the community is really looking for. And I'm just wondering what we might be able to do to add our voice to that concern. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Uh, just to make a clarification, um, which is in the report, that uh, the Joint Standing Committee and Delegated Legislation hasn't disallowed the local law at this stage. They have asked for the city to, for council, and therefore the city to make some undertakings. Uh, I'm hopeful in doing that and then speaking to the Joint Standing Committee uh, that uh we could limit uh the uh changes to um not having to recommence the local law process entirely and potentially introduce some uh the amendments around uh the issues about control of cats uh in respect to the answer about uh, in respect to the question around uh a cat local law uh, uh councillor castle is absolutely correct this issue does demand some clarity from local governments that have um, are trying to manage that space in respect to cats and the inconsistencies that are uh, in place in respect to the control of dogs and the dog legislation versus uh, control of cats. Um, and certainly uh, we can continue to advocate in that place as a city. Um, I'll just hand over to... Uh, Chris Dixon, um, he may have some updates in respect to where the local government is in respect to uh, the CAT Act and the CAT regulations and whether there's changes forthcoming. Uh, through the chair, no, not, none as yet. We're still still waiting on those uh, findings to be further brought to our, brought to our attention. Anything further, Councillor Castle? Do any other councillors have questions or debate on this item? Um, I will say that I did read this again with some concern in relation to the number of local laws that have been put forward and, and haven't made it through. Um, I understand from what the Acting Executive Director has just said that um, there is the possible that possibility that the local law will not be disallowed pending the acceptance of undertakings made as a result of this motion um, or subsequent to this motion, um, which I think is useful. It has been a very long road to get the animal local law sorted and I'm very disappointed that we're here, but I do uh, understand that this city sought legal advice prior to um, presenting to council for adoption and submission to the committee. So um, it would be useful to undertake a lessons learned activity to ensure, hopefully, that they, we don't see these protracted timelines um, by any further in future. Uh, but overall, I don't really see that there's much in here to oppose um, and also echo the um, uh, calls from other councillors to um, get this issue addressed at a state level as well. There being no other questions or debate, I will put the item. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. We are now going to move on to the uh, notice of motion at 13.1, which was mentioned in the chamber as well. Um, that is the Alma Leak diversion. Can I have a mover and oh, hold on, I can move this one. Uh, I will move this item. I, I can't seconded by Councillor Castle. Um, look, I don't really have a great deal to say about this except that um, uh, my view on this matter 
has changed since we last voted on this item. It changed quite soon afterwards, but um, there wasn't, uh, I did take some action to see where we could go, but um, at the time there wasn't any appetite for change. I trust that um, councillors will note that this is not asking for a decision right now, but it is asking for information to be presented. Um, I do note that councillors didn't get access to this notice of motion until today. So um, whilst it is quite detailed in its response, I don't expect you to necessarily be across it all, um, that the notice of motion is quite simple that um, we request a report in May to come back in relation to this diversion. Um, and that decision at that time will be around the future of the diversion. Um, I'd encourage um, any residents to undertake the consultation on Imagine Vincent um, that is available to add into the mix of um, data for presentation. But as I said, I've been engaging with residents and we have two petitions on this item at this point in time as well. Um, and um, I uh, am looking forward to May and I, I uh, believe we probably have enough information to make a decision at that time. Um, yeah, so I thank you for considering this notice of motion to shorten the trial. Um, and make a consideration of the trial in May rather than, I think it would have been August. Councillor Castle. Uh, thank you, Chair. Look, I'm supportive of this notice of motion as well. I had reservations at the time of the decision um, about the this option, and I think we've seen quite a, a clear uh, reaction from the community and certainly I feel that we should be in a position now to actually determine the success or failure of the trial at this point without having to wait a further form three months um, to determine that. Um, obviously then an informed decision can be made about whether, whether to proceed. Um, it is a shame that administration weren't able to prepare this notice in time for the briefing because I do acknowledge that there are a number of engaged citizens and residents um, from North Perth at the time that this uh, original motion was being debated and um, it is a shame that they may not have had an opportunity to read this or to comment but um, I trust that that will become part of that consultation when we when we present that report and there will be an opportunity to consider that. This is clearly a really difficult area um, for traffic to, to manage. Certainly that's evident in the amount of time it took us to make a decision on it in the first place. Um, I do have a lot of reservations that, that about the treatment that we've done here, so I'm very happy to see that brought back to council early to um, review. Council Alexander. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Acting Mayor. Uh, look, I'm largely supportive of, uh, of, of this motion as well, um, but could I just say I'm interested in what happens when we close a road like this. We then have people go into other local roads. So as a council, we seem to make a lot of ad hoc decisions which then have consequences on, on, on other roads. You know, do, do we have an overall plan of where we largely want the traffic to go, because I think we make too many one-off decisions with speed humps and other things without considering what the effect of that might be, which i.e. they use other local roads. So I'm supportive of what uh, Councillor Gonacheski has put forward, but I'm also concerned that um, we do things one at a time as they come up and they have consequences that we, we're not expecting. Thank you, Councillor Alexander. Um, was that a question in relation to whether we have an overall plan? Yeah, look, I, look, I'm just suggesting it would be good so that we don't have, you know, roadblocks going up and then suddenly everyone goes down some laneway and some shortcut and there's there's things that happen. So, you know, one, one road closure begets another one sneaking down some local road. So I really do think we have to have an overall plan, and uh, I do also understand that's easier said than done. Um, would administration care to make any comment in relation to the, I guess, the planning um, instruments available for decision making around um, infrastructure and engineering and interventions on uh, the city's roads? 
Uh, thank you. Through the chair, uh, uh, I have had discussions with uh, the engineering team uh, expressing my desire for us to start taking a more holistic approach in respect to traffic management by commencing traffic studies uh, in specific local area traffic management, uh, considering what the future environment might be for those local areas uh, without the existing um, infrastructure that's been placed in them and taking into consideration uh, the uh, speed limits that are in there uh, and looking at what the best traffic uh, outcomes might be in that space, uh, given the environment. Uh, then consulting on those traffic studies with the community at, a, at that larger space and then starting to look at what uh, interventions need to be put in play to make uh, those uh, uh, that traffic more effective in its moving and safer environment for all in that space. So uh, in short, yes, we do want to take higher level uh, tr studies in respect to traffic in Vincent uh, over the next five years or so. Thank you. And whilst um, it's not necessarily a high level study, I do note that the city is consulting on all of our potential black spot projects for this and next fin financial year currently, which I think is a positive step forward. So. Um, is there any further questions, Councillor Warner? Uh, not so much a question, just a, a comment that um, I support this uh, motion. Um, basically, what comes to mind here is um, the story about the little Dutch boy who tried to save his town from flooding by putting his finger in the dike, and for every hole he covered, there was another one. Um, it seems to sum up our traffic plan in North Perth and probably Greater Vincent as well. Um, but I would say I'm entirely grateful that we conducted a trial uh, traffic restriction here, um, but it has become apparent that there has caused further issues while might have solved some, it's caused others. Uh, I've spoken with local residents about the traffic finding its way down um, streets that are really not equipped to deal with that traffic, dealing with some of these drivers who are quite a uh, aggressive because they've been redirected um the the lack of pedestrian access across the crossing which you know i i can see could be um addressed if this was made permanent but currently it's trial it's it's causing a, a risk at the moment um so i look forward to seeing what uh, we can receive in May to see what we can do about it. But I also appreciate what Peter Varis was saying is that we really do need to adopt a much broader holistic strategy on this. Thank you, Councillor Warner. Hearing no further speakers on this item, I will put it. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Okay, we'll now move on to uh, item Hold on, 9.2, back to the start of the agenda to the review of design guidelines. Um, we will deal with this item in two parts. Um, I will probably better to deal with the Highgate part. I don't, what's the correct order to deal with, with this in if I was to separate it out, which I have to? Through the chair, I would suggest doing the um, broader motion first so that you can participate in that debate and can um, value your comments and then step out for the um, Highgate part. Thank you. Okay, we've got the broader motion. So that's basically everything except for item two that is up for consideration at this point in time. May I have a mover and a seconder for this motion? Moved Councillor Castle, seconded Councillor Wallace. Councillor Castle? No comments on this one? Councillor Wallace? Um, no comments, but it was a really nice table with all of the amendments in which we're going to get we need rescinding and that kind of stuff. So just thank you for that to the executive manager. Yeah. That's fine. True. The question could be, isn't it great? It's because I definitely appreciate a uh, good table uh, from uh, policy and strategy and development. Um, they know how to put a table together. Do I have any other yeah. uh, questions or debate on this item? Um, yeah, look, thank you. I just wanted to note that I've had discussion with some uh, residents and landowners around um, Lacey Street and also William Street um, and that um, uh, so looking forward to opportunities for the city to be able to consult further. Um, 
noting potentially um, that we need we don't want to have things that are um, you know completely prescriptive and that the planning framework will always accommodate um, that. But I do support um, the intent around trying to um, have local planning tools that really capture the heart of the, these areas. Um, and whilst this is a rather large omnibus, it's great to see them all come forward. Um, so I'll put this motion if there is no further speakers on this part of the motion. Okay, all those in favour? That's carried um, unanimously. Um, I will need to exit the chamber as I have a proximity interest in relation to item two, which is the um, request to prepare a notice of revocation of the Highgate design guidelines. Um, we would need to ask someone to step into the chair. Would councillors have any objection to me asking Councillor Hallett to step into the chair while I vacate the room? No, we'll call that carried. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. Thank you, councillors. So we're just looking at item two within 9.2, which is a notice of revocation for Appendix 8 Highgate Design Guidelines. Can I have a mover? <clears throat> Councillor Loden and seconder, Councillor Castle. Councillor Loden, would you like to speak to the item? I don't have anything to add to support the officer recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Castle. No. Any comments, questions from the floor? All right, I'll put the item to a vote. All those in favour? Carried, thank you. Deputy Mayor, you may return to the chamber. Amazing work, Councillor Hallett. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. Uh, I believe we have worked through all of the items of the agenda where there was a, a conflict of interest or that had been called out by councillors or members of the gallery. Um, there is no um, other items that need to be discussed that have not been moved, item 17.1 having been carried on block. With that in mind, I will close the meeting at 8.02pm. Thank you very much for your attendance this evening.